Alright, hi guys, welcome back to another episode on uh, geography. Okay, so basically this is actually a continuation, right? So I've actually been taking a short break, okay, for one, the past three months actually. So we're actually back, okay, and we're going to carry on with geography, okay? So for those of you who are currently struggling in your A-levels, H2 geography, or if you need an extra, you know, help, extra guidance, okay, you can always refer back to this set of slides, okay, this video, whereby I'll explain to you step by step on basically the entire syllabus which is required for A-levels, alright? So... Um, for all my videos as well, I'll also include a, a portion at the back, okay, on your exam requirements, okay, so what is going to be required for exams, okay, what are the key concepts you need to understand, and what are the possible kind of questions which can actually come out, okay, so we're actually going to jump right in, okay, into our fourth lesson, okay, for the entire atmospheric um, portion of your physical geography section, okay, so today we're going to be talking about the Walker Circulation, Okay, so the Walker Circulation, alright, basically this is a concept that you need to understand, okay, it is only one sub-part, okay, of an actual part in the entire syllabus, okay, which is basically your Walker cir Circulation as well as your El Nino. Okay, so this entire portion, you have to make sure you, you study in conjunction, okay, so if not, we will go on first with the Walker Circulation to actually understand, okay, um, what the Walker Circulation is. Okay, so basically the Walker Circulation, okay, is a phenomenon that actually takes place all year round in the Pacific Ocean. Okay, so take note that we're looking at the Pacific Ocean over here. For those of you who do not know, okay, Pacific Ocean is basically the one between your Australia as well as your South America, like Ch uh, Chile, Peru, those, that, those areas. Lah. So basically your Walker Circulation, okay, is actually the normal situation, while the unusual one is actually your El Nino. Okay, so you need to take note of this, okay? We'll dive into greater detail later on as to what El Nino is in the next video, okay? But you need to under first understand, okay, that walker circulation is what usually happens. Walker circulation is actually the normal situation. Okay, so just a quick map guide, okay? So this is basically the Pacific Ocean, okay? When you're looking at walker circulation and El Nino, okay, you're basically going to be looking at this area over here. Okay, we're basically going to be looking at everything that happens between Australia as well as South America, right? Okay, so firstly, what exactly are we going to talk about in the Walker Circulation? Okay, so firstly, we're going to look at the direction, okay, of your warm air as well as water. Okay, so previously in the first few episodes, okay, if you've not seen it, go and watch it, okay, we actually touched on these um, uh, concepts, okay, called trade winds, right? And over here, we're going to be looking at trade winds again, okay, because trade winds play a very important part in your entire atmospheric circulation. Okay, so basically, your Walker Circulation, okay, is the east-west surface circulations of warm air and water between your western and eastern Pacific. Okay, so western and east, eastern Pacific, okay, if you need a quick guide, okay, just remember your, your, your NSWE. Okay, so western Pacific is very simply Australia. This is your western, oops, okay, no, this won't work. Okay, this is your western Pacific, right, and then your eastern Pacific is South America. Okay, so just take note, okay, that is basically... W is on your left, East is on your right. So when you're looking at um, your Western Eastern Pacific, don't don't look at it from the other side of the map. Okay, always look between from the point of view of the Pacific Ocean. Okay, so carry on. on okay, so trade winds basically blow from east to west. So basically, these are known as your easterly trade winds. Okay, and then they bring ocean water towards Indonesia and Australia, the warm ocean water. So here is where there's actually the piling of warm water. Okay, so if we're going back to the map. Okay, it brings warm ocean water towards Indonesia and Australia. So where exactly are these located at? Okay, they are basically located over here. Okay, so always remember trade winds is from east to West, they're going in basically this direction over here. Okay, so moving on. Alright, so on the other hand, okay, that was the part on warm water. Then how about cold water? Okay, so your cold ocean water will rise up to the surface along the coast of Peru and Chile. So Peru and Chile, uh, if you go back to your map, okay, you can go back in time for your video, okay? You actually notice that Peru and Chile are basically located on the eastern Pacific. Okay, so this results in actually the upwelling. Alright, upwelling is just a very chim word. Okay, don't really need to go and properly and okay, okay, chim means complicated. Okay, uh, more of a chim word. Okay, basically, upwelling is basically saying that there is the piling up of cold nutrient rich the ocean water. Okay, so basically, what actually happens? Okay, we'll look at a diagram later on. Okay, what actually happens is that the cold ocean water from from very very deep in the sea actually will rise up. Okay, as a result of the difference in your temperature. So we see this is known as the Peruvian current. Okay, this is an important concept you need to go understand. 
uh, economy of concept is just a key term okay of your upwelling of cold nutrient rich deep ocean water okay so remember that it is called the peruvian current this is distinct to the water circulation so make sure you always quote it in any question that you do okay so just to basically sum up okay warm ocean water is at the western pacific and if you remember from the last video okay we talked about it where there's warm water okay basically warm means there is a high temperature high temperature means pressure is always opposite which means that there's a region of low pressure found at your western pacific on the other hand okay there's cold ocean water actually located at your eastern pacific and this results in a region of high pressure same thing it's all back to your basics okay it's just the opposite of each other Okay, so more processes. Alright, so actually what happens, okay? So basically there's constant active co uh, convection actually occurring, okay, due to the low pressure, which actually take takes place in the air above Indonesia and Australia. So this is back to your Western Pacific, okay? Because like we just mentioned, okay, in the past slide, okay, as a result of the warm ocean water at the Western Pacific, there's actually high temperature. High temperature means low, low pressure, okay? And high temperature also means that there will be active convection. Okay, so for those of you who do not remember, okay, active convection means there is intense heat activity on the surface. Okay, so this results in high rainfall and thunderstorms, okay, resulting in wet weather. Okay, so this one we actually touched on it and I think two episodes ago, okay, it's the same concept again. Okay, when there's high intense convectional activity, okay, there is basically... Um, a lot of heat in the atmosphere. Okay, so this causes your air parcel to expand. Okay, and this will cause it to rise. When it rises, when it reaches your dew point temperature, okay, it forms rain. Uh, and this brings your rainfall, your thunderstorms, and basically any sort of wet weather patterns that may occur. Okay, so on the other hand, okay, as for the other side, okay, the Eastern Pacific, okay, there's actually high pressure. Okay, so high pressure is there, why? Because like, like we said, okay, there is low temperature. Okay, and this low temperature is because of the cold ocean currents. Okay, so this results in actually dry weather, okay, because high pressure, remember, you always associate it with um, dry weather, okay, just imagine yourself when you um, go up into the sky when you take, when you take a plane, right, you're actually increasing um, altitude. When you increase altitude, this will actually increase the pressure, which is why you need to pop your ears, for example, and you realize that your skin, your lips start to get very dry, okay? That's how you always associate drop back to your common sense. Okay, so if you look at the walker circulation in actual diagram form, okay, like we had mentioned, oops, sorry, okay, like we had mentioned, okay, um, originally, okay, how the walker circulation works, okay, is that the trade winds actually blows towards the West, okay, so they blow from the east, which is South America, okay, and they blow towards the west, which is Australia. Okay, so actually what happens next, okay, is that then you see the warm surface water will actually pile up on the sides over here. Okay, while the strong um, uh, cold deep ocean water will actually um, move towards the surface of the eastern Pacific. Okay, and, and as a result, there will be dry sinking air on the eastern Pacific, which causes droughts. And then as for Australia, there will be thunderstorms and floods. Which is why actually if you go and read the news, you realise that uh, places like Chile, places like Peru actually constantly have droughts. Okay, and this is uh, one of the reasons is because of the water circulation. Okay, so actually that's all for the content, okay, for water circulation. It's actually very, very straightforward, okay. In the exam, okay, water circulation usually comes in conjunction with El Nino, okay. So this one, I'll talk about it in the next video. Okay, so basically they tend to take the form of either 12 mark essay questions or in the data response questions. Okay, so data response can be for instance like, um, I'll show you one in the next the next, uh, the next video. Lah. But it can be something like this. They may ask you to, let's say, draw. Okay, it can be drawing the entire worker circula uh, circulation. Okay, so for DRQ, okay, like as I was just saying, okay, they may ask you to also describe the pattern. Okay, so you will see an example of data which will want you to describe the worker circulation and you know. Okay, explain the walker circulation or evaluate the impacts of it. Okay, so your impacts could be things like drought and then um, wet weather, okay, like flooding. Okay, how do they affect your social, your economic, your environmental? Okay, how do they affect those, um, those, those factors? Okay, so for your walker, your walker circulation, okay, there are basically some key concepts you need to take note of. Always have to include whenever you're writing or whenever you're answering a question for um, either walker circulation or you know okay firstly very important trade winds we've talked about it hundreds of times okay trade winds extremely important okay you have to always remember your phrase of piling up of warm water oops okay then you've got the upwelling of deep cold ocean water this is known as your Peruvian current okay like I just mentioned just now it's very important you to understand this 
Okay, then you have got active convection activity. So this is basically your high temp versus low temp, your high pressure versus low pressure. Okay, and yeah, which is why we went next point, high or low pressure. Okay, after that is your Eastern Pacific and Western Pacific. So you're looking at Chile versus Australia. And lastly, you're looking whether there is dry weather or whether there is wet weather. Okay, so your dry weather and wet weather, you have to always remember where has got what at what time. Okay, because when you look at El Nino, which is your next, basically the next part, the next video, okay, you notice that actually the wet weather and dry weather actually will swap. Okay, and when it swaps, what actually happens? So we'll explore this in the next video. Okay, so um, if you actually like this video, okay, um, we will, I hope you would continue to stay, okay, for the next few, then we would um, try and beef up any sort of job content or loopholes that you may currently have.